from the Keystone College's Maple Shearing Bush. We hope you enjoy the show and enjoy one of nature's sweetest rewards. When the northern hemisphere tilts toward the sun, its growing warmth sends sugar stored in the roots and xylem tissue of trees toward their buds. All trees store sugar, but the sugar maple stores it in greatest content, averaging 2.5%. The flow of sap is a complex biological process involving positive and negative pressures created by thawing and freezing of liquid in the sapwood. Although studied in great detail, this process is not completely understood. Sugaring is the name given to the process of tapping, collecting, and boiling of maple sap. American Indians throughout the Northeast and Midwest portions of the North American continent collected and processed this slightly sweet, clear liquid. Slashing the trunk of the sugar maple, they collected sap in hollowed out logs separating the water from the sugar by placing hot rocks in the liquid. This process was repeated until only sugar remained. The dry sugar was stored for use throughout the year. A woodlot containing numerous maple sugar trees suitable for tapping is called a sugar bush. Occasionally, pure stands of sugar maple exist or are planted but usually they coexist with a diversity of tree species. Sugar maples require a well-drained, loamy soil and a cool, moist climate. The familiar leaf is easily identifiable, or during dormant season, the shape of the bud is distinctive. Within the geographic range of the sugar maple, February, March, and April provide optimum conditions for sugaring sunny days above 32 degrees Fahrenheit and freezing nights create the dynamics for what is called a run. The annual timing of sugaring coincides with a relatively quiet period in the agrarian cycle before the earth can be tilled when the severe requirements of winter have eased. A sense of celebratory excitement pervades the tapping of sugar maples marking the beginning of a new cycle of growth. It is an initial sign of spring. It reminds us of our ties to the primitive forces of nature and its life-sustaining abundance. Tapping creates an opening in the tree's sapwood. A small hole is drilled through the bark into the xylem tissue. The smaller the hole, the more quickly the tree can isolate and heal the wounded area, lessening chance of invasion by insects or infection. Healthy sugar maples will heal within a year. A new hole must be drilled each season, but trees can be tapped for generations without causing them damage. A tap is approximately 5 16th of an inch in diameter and an inch and a half in depth. A spile, gently driven into the hole, channels the sap into buckets or drop lines. Over time, spiles have evolved from hollowed out reeds to small carved troughs through cast iron, steel, to plastic. Sugaring is a labor intensive operation. It requires moving gallons of liquid to a central location where quantities of water are boiled out of the sap. At an average of 2.5% sugar, it takes 38 gallons of sap to produce one gallon of syrup. The sugar content varies from year to year, tree to tree, generally lessening as the sugaring season progresses. There may be a late season run where the sugar content drops to 1.7% or lower significantly increasing the volume of liquid to be moved. Traditionally a family operation, today's economics and demographics demand increasing efficiency. Many present day operations use tubing in addition to buckets to move the sap from the spiles to central collection tanks. Multiple taps can be fed into each tube. 
Entire sugar bushes can be tubed into collection tanks and pumped, siphoned, or gravity fed into sap wagons for delivery to the sugar house. Topography, number of taps, and the availability of labor determine the use of buckets or tubing. Whether a sugar bush is above or below your sugar house will determine collection tank sites, pumping requirements, and storage tank sites. Sugaring takes place at an unpredictable time of year. Within a day, temperature and precipitation can vary radically. If the temperature rises above freezing for several 24-hour periods, the run will cease, causing bacteria to flourish in tap holes, tubing, buckets, and tanks, depreciating the quality of the syrup. If the weather freezes down, any sap in the buckets turns into unwieldy ice chunks. Evaporator feeder lines freeze and the entire process halts. An evaporator is a container which can withstand enough heat over a long enough period to boil away the water in the sap. Firing the evaporator is done with wood, oil, or propane. To achieve high quality syrup, the sap should be boiled rapidly. Tantalizing sweet smells accompanied by the roar of the fire and billowing clouds of steam precede the anticipated moment. There is a rhythm to boiling. Expectation is interspersed with hours of stoking the fire, waiting and watching to make sure the valves, floats, feeder lines, and evaporator pans are all functioning properly. Now, the sugar concentration of the boiling sap, nurturing of the fire, and observance of the boil are essential. As the temperature of the boil increases, the energy in the sugar house grows. At exactly 7 degrees Fahrenheit above the boiling temperature of water, maple syrup is drawn off the evaporator. This number indicates the proper sugar concentration in the syrup. If this temperature is exceeded, the syrup will be too thick and crystallize when stored, or drawn off too early, it will be watery and mold. Months of planning days of collecting and hours of boiling are richly rewarded at seven degrees above the boiling point of water. It's difficult to wait until the syrup has cooled to taste the fruit of this labor. Abundant sugar maple stands throughout our heavily forested commonwealth. Pennsylvania has maple resources equal in quantity to Vermont. Despite the number of trees, Pennsylvania's production of syrup is much less than Vermont, New York, or Maine. During the last five years, Pennsylvania's production has reversed its downward trend. The increase in syrup production is due to a growing number of small operations, less than a thousand taps, and the growing realization that maple syrup can provide income to small farm operations. Producing 48,000 gallons of syrup in 2003, Pennsylvania is underutilizing its natural maple resource. The promotion and protection of our maple resource can be strengthened by understanding the simple process of maple syrup production. To take part in a sugaring operation is to learn empirically how we interact with our environment and why it is critical to live sustainably. It is a gift from nature that we may be taught with such sweetness. Hope you enjoyed the show today. And the next time you see the sap flowing through the trees, take the time to enjoy it. Have a great day.